I get my inspiration uh, from Spanish food, obviously. Um, I like to be uh, as original as I can be, but that's, uh, you know, the, Spain has a tremendous amount of tradition and culture. Uh, they too are incredibly enthusiastic about uh, food and seafood in particular. So um, what I'm doing is, uh, is actually a Basque dish, and Basque country, uh, if you haven't heard, is the uh, region in the northeast on the, the channel side. Um, I'm gonna start my other burner. Yeah, that, this one's a bit. Yeah. Uh, so it's a, a dish called gambas, which is shrimp, al pil pil, which is uh, spicy. Uh, so I wanted to sort of put my own twist on it, and make it New Orleans, and butter and cream are always a good uh, way to do that. <laughs> uh, so what I did, uh, it's, it's simply uh, some smoked paprika, great olive oil, uh, obviously shrimp, lots of garlic, uh, it's a little bit spicy with uh, the peppers, and there's a little bit of piquant to the um, uh, to the paprika as well. So, uh, and it's really just kind of uh, putting it together. Never used this. This is different than regular paprika. This is uh, it's actually called pimenton, and it's a Spanish, very smoky paprika. If you've ever eaten chorizo, like Spanish chorizo, uh, that's the flavoring yeah. in yeah. there, and it's just delicious. It's really uh, to me, it's very unique flavor and one of the really uh, true flavors of Spanish cooking. Yeah, I think it's thank, just yeah. wonderful. So uh, I'm, I'm doing this over fairly high heat. Uh, the dish is called sizzling since uh, that's where they do it. Uh, we're going to add the paprika uh, toward the end because it, uh, you don't want it to, uh, to burn as well as the, the garlic. So what's the process going to be once you get the shrimp? We're going to get them to uh, almost to the cook point, to where they're about done. And then, uh, you know, garlic does not take any uh, real time for that aroma to, to come out. And you certainly over um, high heat, you know, you don't want to burn it because you're going right. to get that really bitter uh, edge to it. Well, while we're doing that, I'm going to talk, I'll just mention what my dish is going to be, and I'm kind of tr doing a little sort of start. I'm going to do something that's kind of a signature item from Bayona, which is my restaurant in the French Quarter. Um, we're actually coming up on our 21st anniversary. Um, so this is a grilled shrimp, which I'm actually going to do seared. You have a grilled pan, or you can broil them. You, can, you know, it's not the, the way you cook the shrimp is not as important as the things that go with it. We're going to do... Um, I've already cooked my black beans and I make this little black bean cake. This is something I stole, a recipe that I kind of stole from a friend of mine in Texas uh, many years ago. And the sauce is also... Wait, say that again? I you stole it. stole, stole it. <laughs> anyway, um, of course I made it my own and, you know, added my own touches to it. And I'm wondering how many times I've been to the restaurant and didn't have it. Wow. Wow. I think I've always had that. Okay. Always. I think That's every good. visit. Well, the sauce is a little bit kind of Spanish-y too because it uses uh, All those coriander yeah, and sherry spices. vinegar, white wine. I also use coriander seed, which is kind of an unusual thing. I don't think a lot of uh, people in, this, in, in the United States use coriander seed a lot. It's used a lot in Mediterranean cooking and Indian cooking, but it's really delicious. And I, I don't know, I, I did this little, um, kind of like a little sensory pass around thing. It may not last too long, but it's, coriander is the seed of, the, of what we know as cilantro, fresh coriander. And I also use orange zest in this. And so if you kind of smell, that's the coriander seed ground up and the fresh cilantro and the orange. And if you'll notice, they really all have kind of an orange flavor. And so that's kind of what ties them together. When you pick f uh, fresh cilantro uh, right out of the garden, you'll smell a very strong citrus smell. All right, tell us what you're doing. Uh, I'm actually just getting this to the point where I can, uh, it's, it's now going to be where I want it. I just want to get the... Uh, All right, so you added the garlic. I added the garlic. It, uh, it got right to that sizzle point, and I lowered the heat yeah. a bit. I'm going to go a little bit further. And I see cream. What else was in there? Uh, the tr traditionally, the dish is, is without cream. Uh, I wanted to kind of bump it up. The cream is sort of the substitute for uh, butter. Yeah. So. Now, is that sherry right there? Yes. So that's what I'm going to finish. Did now you already, that it's, did now you already that put it's, sherry in it, or nope. is that at the end? Okay. I'm, I'm getting this to the point where it's uh, to that thick point, and then I'm going to do a, a tiny bit of lemon juice to kind of give it a little more zing, and then this nice sherry. Which so is, that's going to give me the cream. Ooh. It's not going to be too cloyingly thick. 
and uh, and then we're going to take the, the shells and then just sort of assemble it. And when does the pimenton go in there? Is it already in the pimenton? The yeah, the yeah, paprika that, is already in I there. I did. It was the, the first the the garlic, the paprika, and uh, and the peppers. So um, that all came together, and then we're going to give it a little twist. It smells so good. I know. I'm I'm, I'm getting this coriander orange. Uh, so I think I'm going to go ahead and just assemble, and I'll yeah, um, I'll ahead. put some attention on your dish now. All right. This is a three-part dish. We've got the shrimp. Uh, where'd I put them? They're here. And we've already marinated the shrimp. They're peeled and deveined and marinated with a little bit of um, cumin, ground cumin seed, a little bit of coriander, and a pinch of chili powder. And we do, um, you know, it's just a light marinade. You don't want to mask the flavor of the, the shrimp. So it's just to give it a little, a little interest. Um, and then the, the big, the longest part of this dish is cooking the black beans. And what, I, uh, what we do is we cook a big pot of Cuban black beans and they are mm. seasoned with um, onion, poblano pepper, garlic. And then I do um, a little bit of honey and a little bit of vinegar in there. So we cook the black beans, and the black bean recipe is really great. We, we take the black beans, we strain them once they're, we don't add the, the vegetables, the onion and the pepper and the seasoning and the salt, especially not the salt, until the beans are already tender. And then we cook them until they're creamy. And they're starting to really, you know, break down and be soft and, and delicious. And at that point, they are great. And you can make your, the black bean cake, which we, we take them and drain them and puree them in a food processor and make like little mud pies with them, which are these. And the, and the biggest, you know, the trickiest part about this whole recipe is people want to know like what consistency the black beans should be to make these bean cakes. And they should be moist enough that they don't uh, um, stick to you. They should be dry enough not to stick to your hands when you're handling them, but uh, you don't want them to be so dry that they're like crumbly at all. So it should be kind of a creamy puree. All right, this is the sauce. Once we have our beans done, and this of course can be done, you know, days ahead of time. And uh, you've got your marinated shrimp, then you have to make your sauce. And the sauce is is a beurre blanc style sauce. It's one of the classic French sauces, which is basically made with a reduction of wine and shallots and any other flavorings that you want. You can use any kind of wine. You can use sherry, you can use red wine, white wine, lemon juice. And it's the style of starting with a lot of liquid and simmering it until it evaporates and you've got a little bit of liquid and then you whisk butter into it. And that's called a beurre blanc style sauce. These already have a little oil in them. And normally we would do these, this would be good on a barbecue pit under a grill, uh, you know, one of those little George Foreman grill pans, whatever you got. Or a, you know, cast iron skillet. We're just doing it like that since we don't have a grill here. All right, so in here I have white wine, sherry vinegar, the zest and juice of a couple of oranges, some shallots, which are those little onion things, not like scallions, but the little like per small kind of purple gray onions that are very sweet and nice, finely minced. I have the crushed up coriander seed and I have sherry vinegar, which mm. is very delicious. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna, we got a pretty good reduction here. So then you're gonna whisk in butter, but since we don't have a whisk, I'm going to stir in butter, but it'll still work because as long as you've got like a little uh, boiling action, you're okay. Because the, the I don't know if y'all can see, but this is a, at a good simmer. So as long as it's doing that, it's still going to work. I'm just going to take this butter and I'm going to, I'm just going to whisk it in. And the, the bubbling will act almost like a whisk. And I've put my uh, bean cakes in the oven. And when you're working in the butter, you need to make sure you do it a little bit at a time so that you keep the uh, temperature really constant. And this is something that you can do just in a saute pan. You can cook two pieces of fish or some shrimp and take the shrimp out of the pan and just throw some white wine and lemon juice in there 
and a little bit of garlic and then you know swirl a little butter in and it's the same basic idea. All right, and then the other thing that we do is we take our little bean cakes and we, I'm gonna move this here. We dust them lightly with flour. Just give me a little squirt. And we're just gonna throw it in there. And you get a little saute. So I always saute the uh, bean cakes and then put them on a pan and finish them in the oven so they're hot all the way through. So we take that, garnish with a little beautiful cilantro leaf. So we're just gonna take a little bit of our sauce. Wow, beautiful. And I've added the uh, chopped, at the last minute I had the chopped fresh cilantro.